into the opportunities in Morocco, I would like to invite His Excellency Mr. Mohammed Maliki, the Honorable Ambassador, Embassy of the Kingdom of Morocco. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning, Chief Guests, Honorable Parliaments, my dear colleagues and Excellencies, CEOs, excuse me, all the protocol procedures are observed. I can't hide that I am scared. You know why? Because when you are in front of industrialists and then CEOs, you know that you shouldn't waste their time. You know also that they have come here along to have something good in information and they take it. You know also that they have, they are wasting money by coming to see you. So thanks for the efforts and coming to see us. It's indeed an honor and privilege for all of us to be here and then have given this platform to present the opportunities which each of our countries offer. Though in the manner of presentations, I feel that a country cannot be taken and then offered in a few minutes. Countries also cannot be summoned in few, I would say, figures. But then countries can only be understood through their history and then through the linkages and then the things they are offered. The globalized world has given us an opportunity basically between the developing countries. And then while developing countries as a model like India has come so far in terms of development, it's becoming like a very good image to follow, a very good example also to, to go the path with, but also to share with. And uh, I rightly point out uh, their excellencies, and then especially Botswana, we said the Africa is a very good land of opportunities. Then if we have the partnership of to win-win, that's a very good thing. No longer only to sell and then do things. But I think this idea also is changing very much. And then by seeing the number of meetings and events that are taking place between India and Africa, you can see that there is a focus, a growing interest in this country to the world, the African continent. Morocco is, seems to you a very exotic country and, and this is the, the qualification which I have almost heard in so many countries, in so many, from some, so many people. Yesterday I attended an event which was organized by the Confederation of Industries, a dinner. And then I was talking with somebody and he told me, well, do you have some trade with India? I told him, yes. It should be like 20 to $30 million. I say, no. It's $1.3 billion. Why? Because India is the, our first customer of fertilizers. We do help in food security. We are quite conscious of that. But apart from that, not only do we sell, but we have joint ventures with India. That is, there are some investments of Morocco here. In fact, India is becoming, in the next two to three years, the first receiver of Moroccan foreign investments in all Asia. Which means that also Africans can invest in your country. Then there is an opportunity for all of us to move and to so on. Ladies and gentlemen, as you're in this trail, it's I want to tell you that India undoubtedly has a very good image in, in Africa. And that's a very good asset. Through the different turmoils, through different uh, difficulties that has followed with the independence of all these countries and then also the, the, the process of democratization, the process of stabilization all in these countries, the learning of the African countries have become such high that they are going to have also some added values to bring wherever they go. The terms of references have changed. I'm talking in terms like you traders and industrialists. The terms of reference have changed and then the, the business needs values. 
And I think the African countries and then the uh, and India have got great values, which they share, which is a very good asset. When I say the image of India is quite good because it has no hostilities with Africa whatsoever in history. On the contrary, the maritime linkages and then the trade linkages and then the trade that was existing long ago between so many countries, and I can go back to the 14th century with Ibn Battuta, everybody knows it, it's read in the, the courses. So that's roads of uh, spices and the roads of silk is coming as a distinguished uh, asset which we should indeed uh, profit from. Let me touch upon the solar energy, because that was a very brilliant presentation with the initiative. And I want to bring you that it's indeed, yes, we have very good opportunities. Only some figures to tell you, the Morocco is one of the rarest countries in Africa where the coverage of electricity is more than 98%. And throughout my life, I'm not very young. I may look, but I'm not very young. I'm not as old as the dean, of course, but I'm not very young. But throughout my life, I have seen one time electricity shut down, one time. And that time, it was by a very big mistake, I think some rain, and the CEO, the manager of the the electricity uh, corporation was fired on the spot. In terms of water, we have also 96 coverage of drinkable water. That is, you open the tap and you drink directly without any problems. It is all certified. I think when it comes to tourism, we are receiving like 11 million tourists a year. It looks a small figure because all proportionate observed with India, of course, 1.3 billion countries, it's like if you are receiving exactly 450 million tourists a year. Imagine the capacity of a country to receive one-third of the population in tourism. But the vision is even more than that because we are expecting, there is a vision of 2020 and 2030, achieving 20 million and 30 million. I doubt we will reach that figure. Because of the turmoil and then, as my colleague from Botswana said, sometimes, sometimes people are using the same brush to paint all the countries. But already 11 million is a very good, is a very good opportunity, a very good figure. In fact, it's the number one receiver of tourists in this capacity. Why I'm saying this? Because the opportunities, India is one of the rarest countries who have developed luxury tourism so high. And then there is this facility when you get into their hotels and so there is this capacity of receiving you, customizing your the needs which you don't find somewhere else in the world. And which can be a brand by itself to be sold. And then there are indeed some very big Indian companies who either are there already in this category or they are going there also. In terms of investment also, we have some people, I got to learn just lately that we, some Moroccan businessman bought few pharmaceutical companies also in India. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we are a blessed country by opposition. The position of Morocco is amazing one. It's only 14 kilometers from Europe. It's half an hour quick ferry to go from Tangiers to Algiers. We have also only two countries uh, neighboring us. Uh, the blessed one is Algeria, and then we have Mauritania. Then 3,500 kilometers of coastlines, which show the opportunities of fishing. I think we are number one of the fishing industry in all Africa, and then I think uh, Senegal is doing quite well, and there are some collaboration in this regard. I'll give you, because you like people, you like some dots to be given. The difference between Morocco and some countries is we do have a vision. And that vision is followed by the head of state, His Majesty. Personally, then you can follow it through the internet or whatever. 
and then the priorities are made. I'll give you first what are the incentives which may uh, push you one day or to do tomorrow to probably do some business and then invest in Morocco. And I will summarize them in geographical position, of course, because when you sell, you want, when you produce, you want to sell in the less cost. So that's quite easy to, to the European markets. We are also the nearest, the closest point to the America, to Canada. And then also a gate in the West towards the Arab world. Very competitive costs. And then there was a time 15 years ago when people used to ask how much do you pay your laborers in order to open an industry. And I think you may agree with me, it's no longer the case. Now it's what are the qualified laborers do you have? Do you have qualified people to make this move? Instead of bringing all people from my country, it becomes costly. And of course, one of the most reduced tax rates for the investors. Second element is the stable macroeconomic uh, drivers in, in the country. Stable growth because it's 4.5 between 2000 and 2015 throughout the crisis, which is particularly good. Resilience to the crisis, we didn't fit it because our stock market is made of 98% of Moroccan money. So it's somehow we were a little bit uh, protected by that crisis which came. We had some resilience with the international crisis. Very good in controlled inflation, below 2%. But most importantly, we have access free of charge to 1 billion consumers throughout the world. We have free trade agreements with the United States of America, zero taxes which is an opportunity I'm offering also to the Indian investors. They don't need to think of Morocco as one single country, but can, they can think of it as in terms of the access it gives while producing there, the negative certificate, you know it. We have also with Turkey, we have also with some Arab countries, we have also very privileged advance with the ECOWAS, we have also the possibility of accessing very difficult markets because of the experience. Then, I think we, we may say, I don't like to, to be unmodest or to say a few words, but I could say that we would have a world-class infrastructure. And then when I say world-class infrastructure, in terms of 17 international airports, 15 ports, and then one of the top, in terms of use, one of the top 20 uh, Ports, I think top 15 in the Mediterranean, nice becoming top five in the next two years. And then it gives you access to so many other places. Of course, I would uh, skip these uh, pl airport platforms and the strategic. But then, importantly, is the possibility of the uh, logistics. Now, the areas which have very good incentives, I can enumerate them to you. They are ambition sector strategies, I would say the industrial acceleration plan, and then lately, to give you just a figure, Boeing has decided to open 100 companies in Morocco because of the advanced techniques and then expertise we've got into aeronautics. So there is a park in that, in that, in that area, apart from the industries. There is the agriculture green plan, if you invest in agriculture in Morocco, you may get back 80% to your money by the government, if you modernize your sector. It's a choice we have done since the independence, and then while so many countries have gone into industrialization, we went into agriculture. We have always believed that unless people in the country are fed well, you can't do other things, because the food security is something you do not play with. So we should at least have suffice. The longer as long as you depend on other countries to feed, I think that will be very good. That's where India has succeeded quite well. The success of India may not come from the industry, may not come from, but it has been able to, to give access to food with accessible money to one 
1.3 billion consumers with abundance. It's not an easy task. So food security is quite important. Then fisheries, of course, there are some many visions. Tourism, as I call to renewable energy. Let me just stop for a while in renewable energy. Renewable energy needs courage to take. Why it needs courage? It needs courage and then the will from the leaders. It needs strong leaders to decide, yes, it may cost us a little bit more, but we should do it. We have a plan of $9 billion in terms of renewable energies in Morocco for the next five years. And then up to now, I think we are having one, if not the largest, if not the largest one, solar plants in, in, the, in the place where most of the Bollywood movies are being shooted. That is in what is that near Marrakesh. When I say also it needs the courage, because we, if you go up till now, you find that getting the energy from the traditional sources is still becoming higher than the traditional ones. So in economically wise, sometimes people think of getting this use of oil, of coal, and to produce energy. That's why when I say courage, it means that you are taking the government, taking your people to pay more for the energy. But that's the, the responsibility which we should all have. Shared responsibility worldwide is very important. And I think COP22, which was organized and then with big success in Marrakesh, focused on this one, even including the initiative which took form almost there. So this courage and charismatic people like His Majesty, like uh, the Prime Minister of Modi, are needed in the world to make this move and then make a world clean, cleaner than at least what we have right now. Then when the information that the communicate technologies, I'm telling you where the sectors, you can have very big incentives. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would be concluding by saying the things which unite Africa and uh, India are much more than the things which divide them. And then great leaders, great people, which uh, who you are, of course, sometimes need a little bit of click just to take a decision. It's always move to move from home, I know. It's always difficult to put your money somewhere else. But then believe me, at least there is one thing about which all the whole world agrees, Africa is the future. It's the highest getting future. The number of the medium class who are looking into luxury is reaching very easily in the next 10 years, 200 million consumers. Some even are saying more than that, which means that they will be at least having 30 to 50% of their expenses or their money spent into luxury things. When I say luxury, that's things which come for, for services, for other things. So there is room for that. And then I hope that all the partnership that will be built will be built on a based, based on a win-win partnership, but also based on fraternity of respect, mutual respect, and but much better understanding. And India has all those elements to be uh, welcomed heartily in Africa. I thank you so much.